A key witness took the stand Monday to testify against Paul Manafort in his trial for bank fraud and tax evasion. Former Trump deputy campaign chairman Rick Gates admitted to committing crimes with Manafort, including lying to the FBI and the IRS. CBS News Washington correspondent Paula Reed has the latest from Alexandria, Virginia. Today, Richard Gates became the first member of the Trump campaign to admit to crimes on the witness stand. Special counsel Robert Mueller charged Gates and Paul Manafort with dozens of counts related to their lobbying efforts on behalf of foreign governments. But Gates agreed to flip on his former boss in exchange for leniency. Prosecutors quickly got to the heart of the case. Did you commit crimes with Mr. Manafort, asked the prosecutor. Yes, Gates replied. Gates said he conspired with Manafort to falsify tax returns, knowingly failed to report foreign bank accounts, and failed to register Manafort as a foreign agent. Gates also admitted he embezzled from his boss, something Manafort's attorneys have alleged for months. I added money to expense reports and created expense reports that were not accurate, he said, to pad his salary by several hundred thousand dollars. There was no mention of President Trump or his campaign. But the trial is the first big public test for the special counsel, and the White House says the president feels his former campaign chair is being treated unfairly. Certainly the president's been clear. He thinks Paul Manafort's been treated unfairly. CBS News Washington correspondent Paula Reed joins us now from Alexandria, Virginia, with the latest. So, Paula, what could Gates' testimony mean for the special counsel's first trial? Well, this means everything. The prosecution really hinges on the testimony of Rick Gates. You remember that Manafort and Gates, they were charged in the same conspiracy. They both faced dozens of counts, basically for the same fraud. But Gates flipped on his former boss in exchange for leniency in his own case. So when you have your co-defendant flip, that is never a good sign for your possible conviction. But you have to see what happened on the stand today. I mean, he admitted, freely admitted, to committing over half a dozen crimes. So you're asking the jury to believe someone who has admitted to half a dozen crimes, one of which was lying. So it be very interesting to see how his credibility registers with the jury. Now, when the defense gets a crack at him, he's also central to their case. The entire theory of the defense is that it was all Rick Gates, that Manafort trusted him to handle his taxes and other business matters. And not only did he embezzle from Manafort, but he also failed to accurately report their income to the IRS. Well, so although President Trump was not mentioned in this testimony, were there any ties to Paul Manafort's time as the campaign chairman? It's an important point. This case is all about bank fraud. This has nothing to do with the president. This has nothing to do with his campaign. Even the judge has said, look, I know the special counsel's Russia probe doesn't really care about bank fraud. You're charging Manafort to try to get him to talk about what he knows about any ties between Russian operatives and the campaign. The only tie is that some of the alleged bank fraud did extend to the time when Manafort was running the Trump campaign. Well, there was a heated exchange, Paula, as I understand it, in court between the prosecution and the judge. What more can you tell us about that? That's right. I had already come out here to write uh, my evening news story, but one of my our colleagues, uh, Claire Heim, she was in the court and she tells me there was this heated blow up. It's been simmering for a while uh, between Judge Ellis and one of the special counsel prosecutors. This was after the witnesses and jury had left the room. And the crux of the argument was just that the judge does not want prosecutors or the defense getting too deep down in the weeds. He's called the rocket docket. That's his nickname. He wants them to move things along. He's also very particular about language. He does not want any of the Russian clients that Manafort had referred to as oligarchs. He's also very particular about any mention of the president or his campaign. And they got in a shouting match uh, about sort of these legal nuances in terms of how this case is handled. This has been simmering for a while. The, the judge is always trying to hurry the prosecution along, and that's frustrating for them. They want to make sure they get every piece of evidence in front of the jury. So it'll be interesting to see tomorrow if some of that tension has simmered down or if it continues to boil over as we have hours and hours left to go with Mr. Gates. Hmm. And in fact, do we know when Rick Gates is back in court? He will be back tomorrow. There's been so much a drama around his appearance. Last week, people were like, will he testify, won't he testify? Mm -hmm. Clearly, he's testifying. We weren't even sure we'd get him today. But tomorrow, he has at least three more hours of the prosecution, and then the defense will get a crack at him, and they'll probably take at least three hours. So I think tomorrow is going to be a day full of new revelations from Rick Gates. All right. Paula Reed in Alexandria, Virginia for us. Paula, thanks very much.